And this is a little story between the Krishna and Arjuna himself. This is very interesting. And they both were having a little bit of debate on bhakti and, and Arjuna was saying like, you know, my bhakti is so amazing that I've done everything so great. And then he's talking about few different of these bhaktas, the, these devotees, that how their bhakti is so beautiful and who is superior and who is inferior. Now, as Krishna, you know, he was just so like sort of what he did in, in these sort of conflicts. He said, look, you are too caught into your ego. He didn't say it to him in his mind. is like, oh, Arjun is too caught and I don't want to break his heart to tell him directly that you're just being idiot now. He said, don't worry, let's go and visit somebody. So he, he walks Arjuna in, in his, you know, he travels him out and he comes to one of his his, his bhakta or, or this, this beautiful, this, this old lady devotee of him. I totally forgot her name. I think it was Sarangai. I think it was Sarangai. But please ignore my name. I just, just somehow flipped out of my brain. Anyway, she was one of his, 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 his bhakta or the devotee. And her, her love for Krishna was, was the love for the little baby Krishna known as Khana. So she really loved Krishna in, in those Krishna Leelas, all these forms of Krishna. And this little village, he was outskirts of Vrindavan. And she would come and see him and play with him around and sort of have a glimpse of him. And that was enough to keep her into this deep ecstasy. So Krishna said, oh, let me take you somewhere to find out. Now, as they're walking along, Krishna said, well, I can't really take you in our original form. So they're both disguised into two young women or the two young girls. And, and, you know, they knocked onto her door and he said, oh, mother, you know, it seems to be getting dark and, we you know, we still got to travel quite afar. Do you think, is it possible for us to take a shelter and stay with you tonight? Now, the woman looked at like, my dear daughters, of course, you know, this is the house, this is the, the devoted house of Krishna and Krishna pervades in you all, so you are welcome to stay in my house. Well, she gave them food and everything. And as they eating food, they actually found that there was this beautiful picture drawn on the wall of Krishna. And beneath the picture, he had a little self. And on that self, she was keeping three different swords. And the swords have three different sizes. The smallest one, the medium one, and the, the longest one. Now, Obviously, Krishna knew what's happening. He wanted Arjuna to see. So the Krishna, looking at curiously, said, oh, mother, I can see, you know, obviously, you know, he needs disguise. And mother, I can see you love Krishna so much. Your, your life is all about the love, the prem, the bhakti. I don't understand. Why have you got these three swords? Can you tell me about them? So this woman looks at them, the mother, and said, oh, wow, I love my Khan. I love my Krishna so much. And I hate three people in my life. And I got three swords to kill all those three at some point. Now, Arjuna was like, wow, that's a bit of strange kind of love for Krishna. And Arjuna was like, I don't understand. Can you tell me why is that? So see, he was like, oh, tell me, you know, who are these three people? Why got three different swords? So she said, oh, the smallest sword is for Sudama. Now, Sudama was one of the, the poorest devotee of Krishna, the bhakta and the friend of Krishna. And once he visited Krishna in his palace. And obviously in our Indian culture, when you're visiting somebody, even a friend or a temple or something, you never go empty handed. And in, in his house, when he went, all he had was a couple of handfuls of dry rice. So he took the rice and he gave that to Krishna and which Krishna ate with love, with joy. So this now old woman, the mother of Krishna, this, this absolute mother lover of Krishna said, wow, it was such a stupid thing of Sudama to do that he took the dry rice to Krishna. He must have hurt his teeth. He must have hurt his lips. Why would you give someone dry rice to eat? So I must chop his head and punish him for that mistake. Now, Arjuna was really stunned to think like, wow, I would have never thought anything like that. And it's sort of like, you know, as a, as a mother, I'm sure, you know, I got few few of you here. We all have, you know, we have that love for our child. If somebody 
does anything from nasty to my child. This is what I will do. I'm sure you will never do it, but it's think think that way, okay? So you're not over judging judging the, this poor lady, the bhakta of Krishna. So now Arjuna curiously said, well, what is this second sword is for? So said, oh, second sword is for Draupadi. So I know she loved Krishna so much and she did all the bhakti, the devotion. Now this is the one I'm talking about, the, the wife of the five Mandava brothers. And she was really the main character in Mahabharata. Now in, in one of the, the dual game when the Pandavas lost, you know, this, this bad guys, they said, well, disrobe her, take all her robes off in middle of the, the court. And in that moment, she was sort of invoking Krishna, praying for him. And Krishna kept giving her more and more and more sarees. And, and the guy, you know, the, the Dusasana, he could never even end them. It just become like an endless series of the fabric, the cloth that's just coming out of Dropti. Now this Krishna looks at her surprised like, I don't really understand. So why are you trying, what is your point here? She said, don't you understand that the Dusasana in the court, he gave up when he fell unconscious because he was tired, exhausted, pulling all those clothes of Dropti. And she's like, I'm just wondering, my Krishna, he was a young little boy, how much exhaustion his little soft hands would have gone through when he was constantly giving more and more fabric to Draupadi. Why could not she have done something else other than remembering of Krishna? There must be other options. She had five husbands, the greatest of the warriors, she could have asked them to protect her. Krishna said, oh, I understand that. Okay, now the, this is the Arjuna. He was sort of like feeling like, who is the third one? So now Arjuna is trying to ask, he said, so mother, tell me, why is the third sword who this is for? She said, this is the one I must kill at some point because I hate him most for what he did to my little Krishna. And he was like, oh, who is it? He said, this is Arjuna. Now think of you sitting there and she says your name that that is for you. And she was, he was like, what did Arjun do? He said, don't you get it? Like he had so many people, anyone have could looked after his horses and could have pulled his chariot around and, you know, sort of all that, that work in middle of the battlefield, all this bloodshed that he went through, why did he drag Krishna in it? He could have used anybody else. Now, I guess the Arjuna was totally stunned. Now, Krishna is turned now to talk. He looked at the mother and he said, Mother, I totally understand your love for Krishna. But don't you think that the, the Sudama, when he went to see Krishna, all he had was that three handfuls of rice. So actually from his perspective, he gave Krishna everything he had. And he said, I feel that you must forgive this guy. He had no any other choice. Now, okay, that she was like, oh, I understand that what you're saying, my, my dear daughter, I must forgive him. So she forgave him. But she then said, she said, well, how can I forgive Draupadi? So she said, well, mother, again, you need to really see that uh, what is the purpose of divine to be divine? What is the purpose of God to be God? What is the purpose of somebody having the ability, somebody having the power, somebody having the skills to use them to help somebody? She said, don't you think that Draupadi actually enhanced or gave the divine an opportunity to show it to the world that divine is there to help us as and when, in, when we need? And then the lady looked at Krishna and said, I totally agree. I forgive Draupadi too. I love her now. So her kind of, you know, the, the blockage that she had, he was changing into love, into bliss. But she said, I must tell you, Chris, dear, dear daughter, dear woman, I would never forgive Arjuna for anything. Now this time, Krishna funnily, sort of cheekily smiling at Arjuna in the disguise and he said, Mother, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you that Arjuna definitely had other choices he could have taken. But he said, well, mother, you also need to see that the love Arjun had for Krishna, the friendliness, the friendship, the, the closeness Arjun offered to him. And also you need to see that the, the dharma, the karma Arjun performed as being the instrument of the divine. 
and he said mother if you kill arjuna i would have no that krishna would have no friend left and he must have done so much love so much devotion and obviously the lady said oh, well, i see your point and i forgive arjuna too 